Hi, it's Katrina. My friend David is going to be helping me out with the voiceover today, so everyone give him a warm welcome. Number 10. Adam and his many wives. Before Adam and Eve, there was Adam and Lilith. According to Hebrew myth, Lilith and not Eve was the first wife of the biblical Adam, the first man who ever existed. Adam was created by God himself using the dust of the earth, and Adam was given the duty of naming all the living things that God had created. However, by the time he had finished his monumental task, Adam had grown bored. God then took one of Adam's ribs and created Eve as a partner that would be with him for all of eternity. At least, this is the standard version. There's another version of the story in which Lilith is the first woman created for Adam. But this first woman turned out to be more troublesome than God had intended. And so, he had to do away with Lilith and make a new woman for Adam. This reads like the first divorce in human history. Adam wasn't happy with his first wife and requested God got him a new one. In Hebrew myth, Adam and Lilith started quarreling immediately about their equality. Lilith refused to accept the role of Adam's helper, instead wishing to be his equal partner. She also frequently denied Adam's demands to lie beneath him, and this grew to be problematic for the only man on the planet. Lilith later fled the Garden of Eden by choice, and God had to send three angels to find her. When she was finally discovered, Lilith had taken up residence along the Red Sea and was allegedly copulating with demons. When God demanded she return to Adam and make him happy, she refused. God then punished her defiance by causing Lilith's demonic children to perish and cursing her for all of eternity. Number 9. Lilith in Ancient History the story of Lilith as Adam's first wife originated in Hebrew mythology, and yet Lilith has been around for over 4,000 years. She has a role in just about every mythology across Europe, Israel, Egypt, and Old Mesopotamia. However, to trace Lilith back to her beginning, we need to visit Babylon and ancient Sumer. Her name is the biggest key to her past. Lilith comes from the Sumerian word Lilitu or Lily, which to the Sumerians translates into a female demon. The Lilitu was believed to live out in the wasteland of the desert and was particularly dangerous to pregnant women and babies. Thousands of years before the Hebrews started telling stories, and long before Genesis was ever written, desert demonesses were luring pregnant women to their deaths. They were also apparently feeding poison to newborn infants from their bosoms. The Babylonians believed Lilith traveled on demon wings, and they closely associate her with nocturnal birds and the nighttime. Babylonians were so terrified that Lilith would come to kill their babies that they placed plaques outside their doors. One of these plaques was discovered in 1933 in Syria. It was written in the 7th or 8th century BC, and it said, O oh, you who fly in the dark, be off with you this instant. Lilith. It was believed that if Lilith saw her name written on a plaque, she would fear being recognized and be too nervous to go inside that house. Even though Lilith may sound like a terrifying demon who likes to eat children and ruin pregnancies, archaeologists say otherwise. They believe Lilith rose as an urban legend to explain the high rate of infant mortality thousands of years ago. To determine why so many babies died, the ancient Sumerians conceived the story of the Lilithu. It was easier to blame a demoness for the loss of a newborn than to wallow in their own grief. Number 8. Adam and Eve in History According to the church, Adam and Eve were created as completely formed humans about 10,000 years ago. They had no biological ancestors and were snapped into existence at God's whim. However, not all religious believers think that's true. The issue with the Bible is that the passages are confusing and easy to interpret in a variety of ways. If you know nothing about the Bible and picked it up and started reading, you might have a totally different understanding of it than somebody else. And one of the interpretations of the story of Genesis is that Adam and Eve were not created by magic. Instead, Adam and Eve are meant to represent 200,000 years of evolution in Africa. 
Some Christian leaders, such as Billy Graham, say Adam and Eve were real people from history. Others, like the theologian Henri Blanchard, say Genesis is telling the story of the planet and the evolution of humans through allegory. Not even popular church leaders can agree on what the story of Genesis is even saying. The whole tale of Genesis could just be genealogical science explained in a way that ancient Hebrews were comfortable with. It would be like a modern teacher trying to explain complex historical issues using memes. There is a final and extremely intriguing take on the story of Adam and Eve. One interpretation is that they were real historical people living about 6,000 years ago in the Near East. Humans had already spread across the planet. And so, God decided it was time to reveal himself. He came to a pair of farmers known only as Adam and Eve and chose them as his spiritual representatives. If this theory is true, it would make Adam and Eve the first disciples of God, as well as the first missionaries spreading the word of our grand creator across the globe. Number 7. Lilith and the Archangel of Death Samael is known as the Angel of Death, his name translating to Venom of God. It should come as no surprise that the most feared angel in religious history may have had a terrifying relationship with Lilith, the most despised woman of all time. Samael is an archangel, meaning one of the most powerful of all God's messengers. His main duty is to bring death to humanity wherever God sees fit. He's called the Accuser, the Destroyer, and was the one who brought death to the Israelites when they fled Egypt with Moses. Samael is also responsible for seducing humanity into committing acts of evil. He is supposed to test humanity's willpower to tempt those who would be drawn to sin. Once they are led astray, he then destroys them. In Jewish mythology, Samael's role is a little different. He is seen in some translations of old texts as the prince of demons, who rules all the evil forces of creation alongside his demonic wife, Lilith. Yet again, Lilith turns up alongside evil. Number 6. Temptation and Expulsion Temptation and Expulsion is a fantastic painting on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in the Vatican. The piece of art was painted between 1508 and 1512 by the great Italian artist Michelangelo. It's meant to show the story of Genesis, particularly the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. The work shows a figure in a tree reaching out to Adam and Eve. This figure's legs turn into a serpent with two tails that wind about the tree's trunk. On the other side of the painting is Adam being prodded in the neck by an angel as he and Eve are forced out of the garden. It's an interpretation of how Adam and Eve succumbed to temptation and were driven out of paradise. However, things may not be as simple as they seem in this picture. For one thing, nobody knows for certain who the figure in the tree is. Most interpretations say it's the devil, but some scholars believe it could be Lilith. The figure does have some feminine qualities, and we know Michelangelo was heavily influenced by Jewish Kabbalah. This wildly famous painting may have been Michelangelo's interpretation of what happened at the Garden of Eden. After Lilith left the garden, she returned in the form of a serpent to seduce Eve. Lilith did this out of jealousy and spite, ruining Eden and as a result getting Adam and Eve banished on purpose. This theory would make Lilith the serpent in the garden, not the devil. Do you think the snake depicted in the Garden of Eden could have been Lilith? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe! Number 5. Naama. Hebrew myth tells us Adam and Lilith were the first couple and that Eve was simply Lilith's replacement. But according to the Zohar, a collection of stories from Jewish mysticism known as Kabbalah, that's not the entire story. There was a third woman in the picture, and her name was Nama. The story of Nama takes place during a vague and overlooked period in Adam's history. When Adam got rid of Lilith, he got together with Eve, and after they were kicked out of the garden, Eve gave birth to Cain and Abel. After Cain killed Abel, Adam decided he was done with Eve, and the pair separated. The Zohar says they were apart for 130 years. During that time, Lilith came back on the scene and captured Adam's affection. At the same time, Naama showed up and also seduced Adam. The trouble was that both of these women were said to be demons. Adam wound up having an unknown number of demonic children with both of them, creatures some believe could be the mythical Nephilim. Naama is also said to seduce men through their dreams, attaching herself to their deepest desires, and using them to birth more and more demons into the world. Number 4. Inanna 
The earliest mention of Lilith can be found in the Epic of Gilgamesh, dated to 2000 BC. It's the oldest epic poem in the world, a story about the mighty ruler Gilgamesh who slayed monsters on his search for eternal life. Gilgamesh was the original action star, the world's first literary hero. Some think he was even the inspiration for Hercules. In the Epic of Gilgamesh, the hero encounters the Sumerian goddess Inanna, who was worshipped by the Sumerians as the overlord of love and war. She was minding her own business in her garden along the Euphrates River when suddenly she found herself besieged by a trio of villains. One of the villains was Lilith, who was the first wife of Adam. In typical hero fashion, Gilgamesh rushes in wearing heavy armor, slays the villains, and sends Lilith fleeing into the desert. Number 3. Asmodeus Asmodeus is one of the princes of hell, an awful beast with three heads who spits fire and travels around on a dragon with the body of a lion. He's also supposedly the demon whom Lilith joins up with after she leaves Adam and the Garden of Eden. It's said in Jewish mythology that Lilith gives birth to a hundred demons per day. The demon she's having all these baby with is Asmodeus. The whole point of their union is to spawn as many demons as possible to bring chaos into the world. In Christian mythology, Asmodeus is one of the fallen angels who joined Lucifer's rebellion against God. But in the Talmud, an ancient Jewish text, Asmodeus is depicted as the son of Adam and his third wife, Nama. She is the one who seduces him after he leaves Eve for 130 years. What's really interesting about this is we can see how all these different versions of various characters change depending on which ancient script we look at. Asmodeus is always associated with lust, but he has a variety of origins. In the Testament of Solomon, Asmodeus is responsible for driving husbands into fits of desire so that they cheat on their wives and spread chaos. Asmodeus is later depicted as one of the seven lords of hell, responsible for the cardinal sin of lust. Seeing as how Lilith is also associated with demons, the succubus and all things lustful and wrong, it makes sense that she was his consort. Although depending on which ancient script we look at, Lilith was joined with a variety of demons. She was joined with the Angel of Death, Lucifer himself, and also Asmodeus, the lust demon. Number 2. Lamash II the first official mention of Lilith was in summer in the Epic of Gilgamesh, but there's another connection she has to Mesopotamia. In Babylonian mythology, Lamash II was a minor demon who had been kicked out of heaven for her bad behavior. She was so furious about being banished from the best place in the universe that she went on a spree of terror. She tormented mortals, harmed women wherever she could, and murdered babies. For the women and children of ancient Babylonia, the only way to protect their children from the bloodthirsty Lamashtu was by evoking a different demon, one named Pazuzu. Unlike the demons in Christian mythology, those in Babylonia were not inherently evil. They had good sides and bad sides. Pazuzu was terrifying because he would cause famine and drought and laugh as humans starved to death. Yet he was notorious for protecting women and children. On the opposite end of that spectrum, Lamashtu preyed specifically on women and children. She was a terror, and most scholars believe she was the true inspiration for the demoness Lilith. Number 1. Lilith's Legion of Demons Lilith is not the only ancient demoness who terrorized people. She was the worst of the worst in Mesopotamia, but across the world in Japan there was a similar female demon named Yuki Ona, or the Snow Woman. She was believed to appear only in the winter months when it was snowing and cold. She would then prey on travelers who got lost in snowstorms, sucking out their human life force and freezing them solid. She was considered ageless, depicted as having cold white skin and lustrous black hair. Then there is the succubus, the female nightmare demon which visits her victims in the night and sits on their chest to crush them. These demons go back to ancient Arcadia and Summer, feared at the same time as the Lilithu demons. The succubus was unique in that it supposedly took on the form of a beautiful woman, only with bat wings or some other hideous animal attached to her back. And unlike Lilith who tormented women and children, the succubus was more interested in tormenting men. The succubus would attach herself to men as they slept, draining them of their blood and energy until they died while stuck in a horrifying nightmare they couldn't wake up from. 
What are your thoughts on the legend of Lilith? Let us know in the comments below and hit that subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.